Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Truth Noir in season three. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, today on the show, uh, I'm having a uh, guest that has his own show on Pasadena Media as well, and uh, very uh, politically minded, socially minded, uh, writes his own music and books, and is uh, overall a weirdo and uh, fellow concerned citizen. Uh, so I want to thank him for coming on my show and sitting with me. Thank you very uh, much Mr. Dan Nieswander, thank you very much. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, about the show that you do here on Pasadena Media? Yeah, I, my name is Dan Nieswander. Um, I, as a musician, I call myself Nieswander, and I've been a musician my entire life. I uh, started when I was five years old uh, singing in church. And uh, the Blackwood Brothers came to our church, which was a very famous gospel group and, and Elvis Presley's favorite group. Oh, awesome. So that was the first thing I experienced uh, at five years old. Now, was that the group with the guy with the super deep voice? Yes. He was I, in I it originally. I remember him talking yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it was a. Uh, that was my first exposure to professional music. Cool. That's and, a good one to uh, have. <laughs> yeah, and I found out later that they were uh, Elvis Presley's favorite group. So um, that's how I, you know, and of course my parents were classically trained, so I got that exposure. And singing first at five, playing piano at ten. Um, but it took me a long time to finally get around to uh, making professional albums of my own material. Yeah. But I finally did it. And uh, I've got another one here. Lots of demo tapes, but the f that's the second album, actually. Uh, and um, I have a, a clip from this is the first album, um, which is called Revolution of the Heart. And I, when I first started recording it, um, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, <laughs> to be honest. I just yeah. wanted to do a recording. As a matter of fact, I just started with this three song demo, I thought that's all it was going to be. And um, I got to record with some of the best musicians in the state of Indiana, including John Mellencamp's drummer, uh, Dane Clark, who cool. had taken over uh, from Kenny Aronoff. And then he's, uh, he appears on this Revolution of the Heart? Yes, he's on one track on that album called Chameleon. Right And uh, so I put together a one-man show. It's mostly electronic music with a few tracks that are a full band. Uh, and I just started you know, with a keyboard in hand and a stand in the other and a prop bag, uh, went around to different open mics and did it, and next thing I know I'm asked to do a, a warm-up for rock bands, and uh, I was given a variety show at a nightclub nice. that I did once a month that ended up being for three years, <laughs> and a very short period of time I went from being nobody in the scene in Indianapolis to being one of the more popular artists, kind of quirky and David Bowie-esque, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, very cool. And because I would bring characters into the show and do all kinds of you know, fun things with that, you know, kind yeah, of yeah. the Hollywood style kind of thing. And uh, and people loved the song called "Surfing with Jesus" that was on the album. That is a pretty cool song title. Uh, yeah, it, and it, <laughs> it, it, I, it was one of those magical moments, you know, of things that just kind of pulled together, and I knew somehow people would like it, and they did, you know. Um, and um, there. Most like I said, it's mostly electronic, but there are some rock tunes on, on this album. Right on. And I do have a clip. Um, uh, I believe we do have a clip. From, if we uh, could, uh, it's called Out of Order. Cue that up and uh, play it. And then this is a, is it just a music clip or is it like a video? It's a clip from a music video. Okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, and it's, I did the, the, the visuals actually in 2018, but the song was written when I was like 19 years old and oh, then okay. recorded later for this album. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, hey, magical control room guys, do we uh, have that uh, queued up to roll?
All righty, good stuff, man. Thank you. Thank um, you. And then, uh, yeah, and so this one was your first album. First album, Revolution of the Heart. 1999. Yeah. And then, uh, so then what changed between then and this one, 2003? This was Adventures in Wonderland. Wonderland. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you're Mr. Nice Wander. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, nice, but it's. Nice Wander. Nice Wander, yeah. My grandfather didn't know English, so he thought, I guess, nice was spelled N I S. Oh, okay. <laughs> he changed the name. Um, but the that album, yeah, uh, between those two albums, I was doing lots of shows, uh, you know, as a, as a one man show playing. Uh, uh, with backing tracks, I had my uh, Moog synthesizer and I had my nice. di digital synthesizer, and I wore crazy costumes and did characters, and and uh, and then people started coming up to me and said, "Why don't you form a band?" And so I thought about doing that, and then what in individually happened was nobody uh, wanted to actually form a band with me; they wanted to be the band. Mm. So I thought, okay. So uh, it was a whole different thing, you know, than what I was wanting, what I th originally thought I would do, yeah. right? You know, like you know, had the you know the Beatles and different Queen or different bands I liked, you know, each person contributed music and in, in, in that way, you know what I mean, as writers and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, yeah. And uh, nobody wanted to do that. They said, no, we want to play your music because we have our own projects we're already doing, right? So I said, okay. So that's <laughs> that's what ended up happening. And so the second album. Um, it was um, uh, just with a live, all live band, um, people that had played in the band in one time or another. You know, it's all live band music cool. recorded. And, um, and then I just got really inspired to write, you know, a bunch of new songs uh, and uh, made that album. And uh, it also has an insert on the inside where it features like uh, pictures and, and descriptions of like 10 of my characters oh, really? that I would do on stage. Cool. Uh, in, in, uh, uh, including a, a scientist and a, uh, uh, a stand-up comedian, a heavy metal and a yeah, singer yeah. and a glam rocker, and even uh, now man, the superhero of the present moment. So, and then uh, yeah. I've got a clip from this album, uh, which is uh, from a live performance I did in 2017 at Kulak's Woodshed in North Hollywood of a song that people liked a lot called Read a Book. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, watch that clip from... How's everybody doing? Thank you very much, uh, Kulax. This is great. I've been here before. I used to live down the street, actually. I need love, but that's not all. Something to simulate my brain Doesn't have to be that deep Something to take with me in a plane I'd like to read a book Write a song that has a hook Travel to exotic places I want to read a book well, There's always a story to find Something matter of any kind Not just look at the pictures I want to read a book oh, 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 yeah! Nice, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like the, I, I love, I love books, you know, yeah, yeah. and, uh, well, and you can kind of tell even, and uh, we're going to uh, watch a clip of your of the Now Man show in a little bit, um, but uh, you can kind of, it, you, you still maintain that aspect of like switching costumes and playing different characters, and at least in the sizzle reel, like yeah. the intro credits. You can uh, see a little bit of that yeah. there too, yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it was a, a great time, and, and you know, the music scene could have been the next Seattle, but... Um, a lot was going on. I got to play a Clear Channel Music Festival that uh, oh, nice. Blondie was in, and The Roots, you know, oh, and cool. uh, Los Lobos and groups like that. And uh, you know, got written up in the magazines and periodicals and newspapers. And you know, I was also yeah. media ambassador for a UN program for a while. Uh, when when I came out here on vacation, we had 
gala events with Paul McCartney, and oh wow! And uh, so I worked in Hollywood press corps, which you know that's when I got really serious about interviewing people. And I, you know, I guess you'd have to at that point. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, I met Paul McCartney twice, uh, and um, uh, that same night, I'm having a conversation with Brian Wilson and with Jeff Lynne. You know, kind of in the lobby before the event. Yeah. <laughs> like just hanging out, like you know, I'm talking to you, and no problem. I'm used to talking to people, regardless, right? Yeah. But somehow, meeting Paul, I got nervous the first time. But you know, and then the second time I wasn't. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's weird, isn't that how some people just have that kind of impact? You know, because you, you know. But uh, uh, but yeah, I've I've since you know interviewed many 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 people, uh, and of all sorts. Uh, I did get an opportunity to interview Buddy Ebsen around oh, that wow. same right time on. before he died, because he was on the same label I was on. This oh, okay. album here was released uh, originally on Springbound. Okay. Which was an Indiana online label originally. It's now on CD Baby. I wasn't aware that Buddy Ebsen was a musician. Yeah, and he his album was uh, released on the same label. Huh. So I got to do an interview with him over the phone, uh, and it was great music actually. I mean, he he uh, did a version of the theme song of the really of the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> TV Very show. Cool. And the interview, I, one day I'll publish it. You know, in a book, but at the end of the interview, he said to me, "So when are you going back to Indiana, Dan?" And I said, "Oh, leaving on Monday." <laughs> at the time, I was, you know, still living in Indiana. Yeah. And uh, he, he said, "Well, here's one for the road." Will doggies. <laughs> <laughs> that was That's how we awesome. ended the interview, and he's such a nice That's man. That's cool. So it's it's great when you get to meet people, you know, and they have incredible stories to tell, and and. Uh, so that was a yeah. The music scene kind of f uh, fizzled out. I got a, ended up getting a, a, a marketing degree from a university there, and uh, quit my job and came back to California about ten years ago. So, and fast forward, um, I needed a way to you know feel inspired again, and, and and the you know the economy had tanked. As many people heard me talk about that a lot on my show. Yeah, and, I remember when that happened. Wow. <laughs> it was bad news. And I think the day that I, it actually officially did happen is the day I came, was actually back in California. Oh, really? Yeah, December 5th, 2007. So you're saying it was your fault? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought, you know, I needed some, inf uh, some uh, inspiration. I think uh, being a media ambassador, you know, in the past, and then I got involved in the uh, media team of Occupy Los Angeles. Oh, that okay. is, uh, but at around that time, I started writing a book because I had you know, been playing around with this, the character Now Man from my rock theater uh, group of characters. And um, I thought, superhero of the present moment, that, I like that vibe of that character. I just haven't done anything with it, you know, really. Yeah. Um, and um, so I started to say, oh, yeah, I'll start just writing something like it's a journal, right? So I literally started writing one day at a time, like even just a little bit, or, you know, and just kind of spontaneously. Uh, and um, until I felt like I got at least 366 um, Things, little entries. Entries, and I think there's actually more than that, but, um, and it just, you know, as, my, as what was going on in my life at that time, th through how the character would perceive the world and what's going on. Right. And, <laughs> and when Occupy happened, right, you know, as, uh, uh, as I was starting that process, like one, you know, months later, you know, so I thought, this is perfect because. You know, superheroes are all about changing the world and making it a better place. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And so I, that's perfect. You know what I mean? Because like, I can incorporate, you know, this whole, in, in real time, what's going on with yeah, what I'm doing with Occupy. Yeah, stuff that's happening around you every day. <laughs> yeah, because I was down there at Occupy probably 30-some days. Oh, wow. You know, uh, anywhere from like two hours to 10 hours mm -hmm. a day, right? So I was really involved in a lot of stuff. I was even one of the primary organizers of Occupy the Rose Parade, which happened after the encampment phase. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember so, that. 
Uh, I'll, you know, there's definitely much, a lot I could, I could do a whole show about Occupy. <laughs> there was a lot going on that people didn't hear about folks. Well, yeah, uh, it was a, uh, much more widespread than just America. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the stuff was going on at various places around the world. Oh, yeah, countries. I have friends in Occupy London now. I mean, it's just, you know, that's you know, still friends with them, or one, one person anyway. Yeah. So it, it really helped establish a lot of relationships that are some that are ongoing to this day. So. Um, so that inspired, you know, I think a lot of getting the book done. And then I finally got to a point where I said, okay, it's done. 2013, self-published it, you know, put it out there. And it's called The Universe According to Now Man. So uh, right my brother, uh, my brother Jay Wander did all the artwork for all three of these things. Just incredible stuff. The album covers, book cover, and insert art. Um, and uh, just fantastic you know, being able to work with my very talented brother, who should be an international, internationally known artist, if you ask <laughs> me. Uh, but uh, no, it's definitely cool stuff. And then I really, it, it motivated me once I learned about the studio to come here and do a TV show, and I took a year to create um, the Now Man show. Um, which is just made sense. It just had a nice ring to yeah, it. Yeah, you already had the infrastructure set up for it. <laughs> so, yeah, and I thought arts entertainment, you know, education news, uh, and then because of what was happening at the time with uh, uh, the left progressive, I, people know now as the left progressives, uh, and how they weren't getting enough coverage, starting with Bernie Sanders. Uh, as well as the, particularly the issues and the policies of the left progressives were not getting enough attention. Um, and yeah, if Bernie wasn't getting enough coverage, the actual issues certainly weren't. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. And that's why I was motivated to include that as a fifth element in the show, because uh, I interviewed people like Stevie Wonder's uh, uh, Grammy Award winning uh, producer engineer was in here, um, also Mike Farrell from MASH, talking about his oh, one-man yeah. play. Uh, Denny Tedesco, the director of the Wrecking Crew film about the LA Session musicians. Great Don film. Randy, who was one of those musicians, as in, I interviewed him in this room. Mm -hmm. um, I've also interviewed uh, out in the field, Dennis Kucinich, Ann Coulter. Uh, you know, I've had what live bands What was interviewing Ann Coulter like? <laughs> well, she <laughs> predicted that Donald Trump would become the president. And when I asked her uh, who she thought the uh, vice presidential pick should, should be, she mentioned uh, Chris Kobach, who's now in the news because he's the guy that, that um, came up with that E-Verify. Oh, okay. You know, uh, that uh, that's a software program that um, uh, now businesses can use to see if they're, they could potentially be hiring an illegal alien. <sighs> And I saw that, I won't mention the name of the, uh, the, the pizza place, but I saw a sign on the outside uh, today that said, uh, you know, we use E-Verify here. Like, ooh, that is creepy. But anyway. It's kind of, I, I don't know why you would do that around here. Like, that's got to yeah, be right? a, a, a business killer in these I would think parts so. of town. Yeah, but I saw <laughs> it today. I'm not kidding you. I did a double take, like, what? But yeah, I do have a clip from the Now Man Show. If you'd like to see a little Absolutely, bit, absolutely, yeah. If we could, uh, if we could get the clip from the Now Man Show pulled up, uh, this is uh, this is your current project. Um, you've interviewed a bunch of cool people on it, and this is um, just a few samples. Yeah, and it's it's been it's been inspirational to me personally. Thank you very it, much. It uh, yeah. definitely lends a a view of what is capable within what, what the change. possibilities are in these walls so yes exactly very Thank cool very to much. see uh, we're just waiting for it to get queued up there we the wind go wind will change the water main will break risks happen and so you got to kind of always be trying to get more surplus more profits because the more you have the safer you are to face any eventuality it's built into the system that the capitalist's anxiety about keeping his or her hands on that surplus means you got to use the surplus to build your company to get more surplus and therefore become safer. And so the system has built into it not just the need to get as much surplus as possible, but to grow the enterprise, to build it out. Because if you don't, you risk collapse, disaster. <laughs> Hello, this is 
Ice Wander, and you're watching The Now Man Show. And today I'm here with David Bowie's piano man, Mike Garson. Hello, it's great to see you again. Likewise. Ah, this is fantastic. So a lot has happened, actually, since we were last in this room together. The, the David Bowie Celebration concert I attended uh, at the Wiltern. Sting was kind of a wild highlight both nights. He was supposed to come just one night. He yeah. liked it so much he came back. And wow. he sang, uh, I think, Lazarus, right? And he did Black Star. And anyone who has the real jazz sensibility mm -hmm. tends to like to create in the moment. And you are obviously a medical doctor. What is the best way going forward to get a single payer in this country? Most countries have that, and we need it too. Exactly. We need it, and we can afford it, in fact, because it doesn't cost any more than what we are paying right now. It simply ensures that our health care dollars are paying for health care, not for health profiteering. We need a health care system that is, uh, that is uh, established for people, not for making profit. So again, this is all a matter of achieving critical mass. We need to come together as the many movements we are for health justice, for climate justice, for racial and economic and LGBT justice yes, yes. and women's justice. When we get together with the courage of our convictions, we're unstoppable. And so, yeah, at the very end of that clip, we see all of your different characters and costuming and, and all some of the guests kind of that have been on the show. Yeah, either here in the studio or out in the field. So. But yeah, I mean, those are some pretty heavy hitters you'd, you'd have had on your show. You got Jill Stein, uh, the first man that was talking the uh, economy. Richard Wolf. W Richard Wolf, yes. His show is also uh, here on the uh, the Royal Channel as well. Yeah, which you helped facilitate bringing that yeah. here, correct? Bringing it in from Manhattan, yeah. And it's on. Uh, and my show follows his show on Saturdays. As Very when cool. It first, you know, runs. And then that's uh, that is that time change or is it always Saturday morning? Always Saturday morning and night, seven, uh, his show is 7 a.m. minus 7.30 uh, a.m. and p.m. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if, if you're watching uh, in the local Pasadena area, it's a, it's a good uh, uh, economy lesson and then, and then you get to see Dan afterwards doing the <laughs> yeah. Nailman show. And also too, I mean, on the the, uh, there's two different Now Man Show channels on YouTube. Uh, the first one is the Now Man Show on the Aurora channel, and that's okay. all the the content that you'll see, you know, broadcasting on the Aurora, on the Royal channel. Okay. Right. And then I have another one that's kind of work in progress called the Now Man Show, just by itself. And like I said, that's a work in progress. So there will be some additional fun things there too. Nice. Get the yeah. outtakes and the. And the deleted scenes. And things you won't <laughs> see on broadcast, uh, may, you may or may not see them broadcast on TV, too. Interesting. So, yeah. Right on. So in your opinion, with the few minutes that we have left, uh, what, are, uh, what are some issues that uh, you're looking to cover next, either politically or uh, around the community or anything like that on yes. your show? Yes. Thank you for that question. Um, coalition building, I think, is really important at this point, uh, and to know how to do that because one of the reasons why I picked left progressive issues as well as left progressive people to, to interview on the show is because that's been missing from the, the discussion. And, and I've said even in live streams um, that the people think that left center is left, you know, and then all the way to the right wing, and then the actual real left is usually left out of the discussion. So that needs to be brought, you know, first and foremost to people's attention that look, there are left perspectives. And also, too, um, social uh, democracy or democratic socialism, however you want to interpret that, is yeah. akin to um, FDR's New Deal which was a first step towards making the world a better place, but not the final step, which a lot of people need to understand that as well. So I want to make that part of the discussion going forward. And creating coalitions, particularly uh, wherever it can work, but maybe you know, with the left in particular, because it seems like they're scattered all over the place. Yeah, it seems like, like the right, the right wing is much better at doing that. And they have all yes. the, the think tanks and the coalitions and 
uh, and this like cohesiveness of like, all right, well, whatever it is, we're just going to do this. And there's a lot more bickering on the left of like, well, no, this is more important, and no, this is more important. And uh, it, it seems like a lot less organized. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and it's also you know, uh, equivalated with um, uh, sports, like we have to have winners and losers. So if you look at it from that angle, uh, the right wing uh, is definitely winning. So right. if you, you, you can't win if you have too many issues to focus on. Now, one of the great things about Occupy was that all those issues were focused around economic justice. Dr. King did with the people's, uh, the Poor People's Campaign in 1968. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's got to be brought back, which it has been. Uh, we need, I think there's five issues that we can create coalitions on. I'll cover those real quick. Um, anti-war, anti-poverty, anti-fascism, uh, well, but anti-racism. Well, those come from Dr. King's original Poor People's Campaign in 1968. But in you know, 2018, we've added uh, environmental justice. The fifth issue, which is unique to the U.S., I think needs to be getting the money out of politics. Uh, and that's corporate money, not public money. Um, right. Like Bernie Sanders and Ocasio Cortez have done. Um, that's, I think, what we need to create coalitions around, and we need to be adamant about it because there's not enough people that are willing to come together and do that, not be complacent, and not be ignorant. And we need to actually get there and do that if we want to see the world get better. Yeah, absolutely. There's not enough people, and this has uh, been my thing in past episodes of the show, is that. All of this stuff is there to be known. All of the history, all of the past political maneuverings are in the historical record for anyone who wants to learn them to, like, all of this ignorance is completely unnecessary these That's days. Right. Um, so, yeah, all of that being said, uh, we're running out of time. Yeah, I wish but, we had more time. Uh, absolutely. Well, you, well, you'll have to just come back one of these days. Oh, I'd love to, <laughs> and you'll have to come on my show, too. I would be an honor. Um, so, yeah, thank you again. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Uh, Dan Nicewander of The Now Man Show right here on Pasadena Media. And uh, we're going to be coming back to you next time with more weird stuff. I love it. And, uh, yeah, in the meantime, wherever you're going, get there safe. See you next time. Bye.